This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike version 3.0 license. The first thing we're going to do is inventory the parts in our really bare bones board kit. So carefully open it up and take all the parts out. You have a processor, which runs at 16 megahertz, far slower than your laptop. Then a motherboard. This is where everything will be attached. We have some pins, also known as headers. These are male headers, and we'll use them to plug our computer into the, into the sensor itself. Here we have a small header that we'll use to get code onto the processor. Next, two capacitors. They help make sure that there's no wiggle in the electric current coming into our board. The DC power jack, that's how we're going to plug in so that our computer gets power. This is a voltage regulator. This lets us put anywhere from 6 to 12 volts in and get 5 volts out. That's all our processor can handle. Another couple of capacitors. We'll work those into the circuit. This is kind of important. This is a crystal oscillator. When an electric current is applied, it outputs a signal at 16 megahertz. A reset button. You can push it. It's kind of fun. A diode. You can think of this as a sluice gate for electronics. It keeps current from going the wrong way. Ooh, this is, I have a hard time picking this one up. This is an LED, otherwise known as a blinking light. And lastly, two resistors. And we'll use those to make sure the LED doesn't burn out. So first things first, clear your workspace, leave only the motherboard out, and put on your safety goggles. Remember, without your safety goggles, you could be responsible for the economic collapse of the United States. The first components that we're going to add are the resistors. We're going to add R1 and R2. They're both clearly labeled on the board. And what you do is you want to bend the legs of the res resistor down. And I don't really do a good job with this first one, so I'm going to sort of speed through it. But you'll see that I try and bend the legs down, and then I put those two legs through this hole, wiggle it through, and then I bend the legs out. There you go. Now I do a better job with this one, which is R1. You can see it there. So I'm going to take the resistor and first carefully bend the legs down so I have two nice 90 degree bends. Do this gently. Please don't break the legs off the resistor. You can see there, that's pretty good. Insert the legs through the holes. And then flatten the legs out. When you're done, you should have something that looks like some kind of funny insect with four legs. That's step one. Now we're going to solder the two resistors in place. Make sure your safety goggles are on and your partner can help you hold the board in place. What you do is you come in, gently heat the leg and the pad, and all you have to do is just touch to it, and then touch it with the solder, and then pull away. Touch, solder, pull away. And I just retouched a little. Once again, touch, solder, pull away. What you're doing is you're heating the leg, you're heating the copper pad, and then you're melting the solder into the connection. What you might do is one of you might do both resistors and the other might then do the two capacitors that are coming up. That way you get each get a chance to practice soldering on components that are quite robust. Now come in with your clippers and snip the legs down as close as you can to the solder joint. Keep in mind the legs do kind of launch off, which is another reason that we wear safety goggles. When you're done, your board should lay flat. Next, we're going to add two capacitors to our circuit. These go at locations C3 and C4. Here you can see C4 and over here 
C3. Now the legs on the capacitors are already just about the right distance apart to go into these spots. So we'll wiggle them through and then bend the legs back and solder them to the board much like we did the resistors. There. Now this is a good place for your partner to help hold the board as the board is going to become oddly shaped on the other side, which makes life a bit difficult. I touch, apply some solder, touch, apply some solder, and the same over here. Touch, heat, apply a bit of solder, and the same here again. I'm not using much solder, and I'm not leaving the soldering iron on the components for a very long time, as we don't want to overheat them. Then, just like with the resistors, we snip back the leads. Next, we're going to insert the LED, or small light. Note, it has a positive side and a negative side. You must look very carefully and find the large anvil, which will tell us which is the negative side. Insert it then correctly into the board so that the plus lines up with the positive side. When your partner has verified that you have the right idea, go ahead and flip it over, have your partner hold the board, and solder the LED in. Like all our other components, we'll then trim it close to the board. Don't be afraid to ask somebody to verify which direction the LED goes. You don't want to have to try and undo soldering your parts to the board. Next, we're going to insert our reset switch. This should go in fairly obviously, and it snaps in with a nice resounding little click. Click. Go ahead and flip it over and solder it into place like any other component that you've worked with so far. You don't have to trim the legs back, but if you want to, you may. Next, we insert our voltage regulator. That goes right here. It has three leads. Now we have to orient this correctly or it will get hot and explode. This is bad. So make sure the flat edge lines up with the flat edge of the board. At that point, bend the legs back and solder like you have every other component. Next, we'll insert the two capacitors that keep our power clean from any kind of alternating current ripple. Note that the capacitor has a gray stripe. The gray stripe indicates the negative side of the capacitor. The board is marked with a tiny plus. That represents the positive side of the capacitor. So you have to make sure that you line up the capacitor correctly. The gray stripe should be away from the plus. Once you figure that out, double check with your partner, bend the legs over, solder and trim. Now we're more than halfway there, so we'll pick up in the next video and finish building our board.